Why hello everyone, I'm back, so here we are, back on the RDF and looking at my dual read RAM. So this is the in-depth video, so firstly let's get on describing RAM. So let's get on with it, see you then. Okay, so first to start off, we're going to have to know what RAM is. So RAM is random access memory. So that means I can input any number. So I can input any number into here and write it to any given register. So I, read, I, wrote, I wrote that into register 1. So that I can read from register 1 and now it will dis be displaying the same input that I put in. And now I can change this input. And now I can save it into register 1 again. So now it has changed. Okay. So now I can flip that lever again and now it is not reading anymore. Now, here comes the random access part in random access memory. So if I read from register 2, I can also do that, and it is a different output. And then I can read from register 3, and that is now parsing an output. There we are. And that is basically RAM in general. Okay, so now to actually explain the dual read RAM. So you're probably wondering at first, uh, why would I need dual read? Well, the main reason is, is because in computers and everything, uh, the ALU takes two different inputs inputs and with only a one one read or one output uh, you're gonna have to perform two lines of code just to put in the uh, input for the ALU and this may uh, actually take a little bit so uh, a dual read RAM will read from two different places so that means I can read from A and B so I can input A and B at the same time without messing up any of the any of the uh, current reading RAM so if I read from register 1 and read A and I can read from register 2 and read B you can notice that these are two completely different outputs and they do not interfere with each other. I can turn this one off and that won't interfere with that and I can turn this one off and then this one back on and they just don't interfere but when you read from the same place at the same time, two places at the same time it just doesn't work because they just or each other or overlap each other and that is not good because you get a false read and basically bad things happen so anyway that is what dual read RAM is basically for so I can read from two places at the same time and not have any complicated process just to read from the one point to get two different outputs. So, anyway, let's get on with the next part, and that's explaining the actual device. Okay. So now it's time to ex explain the actual device. So here is a cut section of it. So right here we have our uh, bud flop or
basically. Well, not a bud flop, but when this is on, you notice that this piston isn't being affected. But actually, what's happening is it's being powered, but not being powered directly. So theoretically, this piston should be extending, but it has not received an update to update that piston and extend it. So if I update this piston, updating this wire, and the only reason I have glowstone is so that it does not interfere with this piston, or force all the pistons on, which will provide all inputs off and then back on, which may not be very good if you're reading at the same time while you're writing. So, if I press this bus button, that will update this block, sending power down here. And then it gets into this little intersection. First off, it, it powers this piston, and when this is powered, it is resembling a zero, so it is a inverter. All the inputs, by the way, have to be inverted to parse a valid output, because whenever this is on, this piston is being forced on. And the way the, the way the read works, it has this little little wire right here, and this wire controls this torch, keeping this piston on. So nema, so nema, so no matter what value this is on, this will be always forced be forced on until the torch goes off, which it should be. But this little little server bug or client bug, I'm not too sure, but sometimes redstone does not update perfectly. Anyways, now that is off, this piston is free to do what it does. And let's just say I give it a 1, and I update that piston. This gets depowered, allowing this piston uh, to depower, pulling up that block, allowing a redstone pulse to go through. Well, not a pulse, but a constant signal powered by this torch that gets put down here and then onto this main bus. And this is the A bus that everything is going to be traveling on. So that was actually the easy part. Now what I gotta do is I gotta bring the same thing, but bring it down here. So what I did was I first use the same wire, put a torch on the side, so now it is just powering this piston. And when it is just powering that piston, this torch allowing redstone to be cut off or go and gone through. So this is basically this, but bust down here. So that's what that part is. So now it has the same exact thing as right here, but then orientated differently. So this piece of redstone is just doing, well, keeping this piston powered or depowered, depending on the latch's state up there. So when I uh, call for a read from that, that will go now go off allowing power to go through. Once I depower that, the pulse is now off. And yet again with the... Okay. So now to compare it to um, my normal just uh, RAM. So here's my normal uh, slice of RAM. It is my 2x2x15 RAM. And my dual read RAM is uh, 2x4x15. By by so, now what this is, is basically the normal, you know, standard single read RAM. So here's the uh, set or update piston, and here is the one write. Well, I mean a read, not write. So, if I put in a 1, and I update the piston, it will now do the same exact thing. 
So now on to a tutorial so you guys can build this for your own. Okay, now for the tutorial. So first you want to start out with one block and build out four. So now you have a line with four pieces of redstone. So now you want to place a block right here, a piston right here, break that, and then place a block. This is your bud. So now what you want to do is grab your glowstone and then put the wire just like this, extending in this direction. So now that you've created your right pulse. So now what you want to do is you want to build down just like this, place that like that, and then place a torch right here with a piece of redstone. Now under that block with a piston, you want to place a block right here, place redstone right here, and then build out again and place that right there. Now what you want to do is take a now what you want to do is take a piston and put it right here and then place it right there. Now what you want to do is make a little zigzag right here, place a torch, and then two pieces of redstone. That created your first reed. So now what you want to do is place a block uh, just like this, like that and then build up just like so. So now I can provide a source of power. Now what you want to do is build right under that, place that right there, bring that down, and then drop that down a bit. So that is um, basically one, one read done. So now it's time to build the other reed. So now what you want to do is place a torch right here. Place a piston right there. And then a block right there. Now what you want to do is place two blocks out like that. Place a torch right there. Piece of redstone. Go like down like that, place a piece of redstone dust, place a piston right here, place another block. Now what you want to do is um, build down like this, place a torch right here, and then make a little backwards L. Well, an L, not a backwards L. Yeah, that's a backwards L. Brain fart. Aren't they fun? Very, very fun. Okay. So from that, what you want to do is you want to go out like this. Place another torch with another piece of redstone. Build down like that. Extend out four blocks. And then place four four pieces of redstone just like that. Now um, you are basically done. So now everything should parse a one. That is correct. And that is correct. So now if we want to add, now we want to write to that cell. You place that and then now it should, everything should parse a one. I mean a zero. Wonderful. It works. So now you're probably thinking, hmm, how am I going to add the repeaters? But, hey, I got you. So now what you want to do is select um, all of your device. And now, with world edit, obviously, and if you're wondering how I got this, like, red box, this GUI, it is um, world edit CUI or client user interface. Very useful when we're all editing. So now what you want to do is slash slash stack 
and then stack that three times. From those three times, you would like to add a repeater in which way your inputs are going to be fl flowing. For now, it's just going to be flowing this way. Next, what you want to do is you would like to place a repeater right here. Oh yes, I forgot one thing. You need to place a block right here and then place a block just like that with each and every one. That is a very hard thing to catch. So, sorry for that minor inconvenience, but what you want to do is place a block right above that redstone. So, and then just do it to every cell. So now what you want to do is go down here and place a repeater right here, I believe. And then I'm just doing some testing. Yep, you want to place a repeater right there and then break that. Okay, so now what you want to do is you would like to select the whole thing, so that means everything, and then slash slash stack 7. So now that should have made 8, eight, uh, 8 slices of what you just made. So now to extend the uh, pulse, you would like to break that and then place a repeater at the end of each each cell. Oops, accidentally broke a piston. Okay. Now that that's done, uh, you also need to add yet another thing, and that is repeaters to the reads. So right here you just want to place repeaters, just like so. And now what you want to do is place repeaters right here, right here, right here. And now what you also want to do is place a repeater right here. And do that for everything else. Okay. So, now that you're done with that, you can basically stack this in any infinite direction and not worry about any pulse is not getting through, but obviously it will get slower as you expand it. That is basically that, but remade just for you. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. See you all later.